third most serious drug charges being caught in possession of drugs with a value in exceed, exceeding 13,000 euros. It's kind of section 15A, it's called. If you're caught in possession of drugs with that value or above, and if it exceeds 13,000, it could be 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 100,000, then you're at high risk of jail because it, that, that's, that particular offense attracts 10 years imprisonment. Now, when they brought that in back in, I think, 1999, the idea was it, it would target drug uh, gangsters, you know, the, the top uh, guys in drug gangs in Dublin and parts of the, of the country. And so those guys didn't want to get caught with drugs because if they got caught with that stuff, they would be doing 10 years in jail because the guards would have give evidence inside in court to say this person is running a organized crime gang and is the head person. So it was imperative for those guys and their lieutenants underneath them to make sure they wouldn't be caught with this stuff. So then what they started doing was giving it to nondescript people who've never been in trouble before, or who are desperate for money, and they would ask them to store that particular drug for a day or two days until someone else came along to take it away and so on and so forth. And so while they were doing that, they'd get some money. But then they were being infiltrated and they were being caught. So the people being brought to court in the, mo in the main charged with possession of drugs with a value of 13,000 or more were ordinary people you know, with maybe some convictions, but not many who were out of work, usually young men, and with very little money. And then the judges, the judiciary had a, had a real conundrum. I mean, is it right that we jail these people for 10 years? And then they decided, well, no, it's not, because they're not the ones that the people that the legislature were trying to target. They were trying to target the very top guys, and those guys are not being targeted. The people who were being, who were being targeted by this were in the main people with very few uh, outlooks in life, you know, who had very little prospects. They shouldn't be going to jail for 10 years. So what the judiciary were doing was that they would, they would bring that, per that person would be before the court and the judge would say, well, this sentence, sh you know, this offence attracts a 10-year sentence. But, so I'm going to discount something from that, depending on certain factors, like whether he's, uh, you know, married, whether he's a job, whether he's got children, whether he's had previous convictions, whether he was of material assistance to the guards. That's a very nebulous term. I'm not sure really what it means, but I suppose helping the guards in their inquiries. And if you did, or if you had done those few things, uh, the ten years would, would be reduced down to nine, to eight, to seven, to six, to five, and so on, until it got to a, a baseline number. And usually, although not always, in no two cases are the same, the judge would say, "Right, I'm going to get four years in jail, but I'll suspend it entirely on condition, you know, keeps the peace and is of good behaviour and doesn't come to the attention of the guards for the next." five years. If you've been caught in possession of drugs, what happens next? Well, what happens next is you will be summoned to court. Uh, depending, no matter what the guard says to you, and sometimes people tell me the guard said there, there won't be a summons, there will be a summons, guaranteed, 100%. There'll be a summons to court. Uh, depends on the quality of the substance, whether it's cannabis, heroin, cocaine, uh, you know, benzos, whatever it is. If it's, uh, sub if, if it's cannabis, it's, you know, under a certain value, it's going to be district court. If it's the other substances, and it's of a higher value, you could be going before the circuit court, before a judge and jury, if they think you're, you had it in possession for sale or supply. If you get stopped for speeding, and if you pay the fine that you're gonna get, uh, it's three points. If you don't pay it, then it goes to court, and then if you're convicted there, you get five points. Um, oftentimes, people end up coming to court for a speeding case, and they claim that they have never received the original fine in the post. It, never, it, it didn't make its way to them. And that happens an awful lot around the country. And if you didn't get it, then that's seen as a defense because if you had got it, you would have paid it and taken your three. But because you didn't get it, you're now being brought to court where you're going to be exposed to five points. So people can take a, the witness box and swear under oath that they didn't get the original final spot. And if the court's satisfied, then they strike the matter out.